Hi everyone, this is Karen Newman and this is the Thursday evening Hukalo Hangout. We have a very special guest. Her name is Sharon McCormick and she's here to talk us to us about hybrid children, hybrid parents and how to connect to them and her journey in the hybrid world. Um, my name is Karen Newman. As I said, in our room today we have myself, we have Guru Dan, Sharon, uh, we have Wendy, uh, Kalisk, Sabrina, Frantik, and also Firstborn. So a welcome to everyone. We'll be taking questions after Sharon gives her introduction and then we'll just see how we flow. We'll go for about an hour and a half. If the room starts to fill up and there's lots more questions, then I would just ask everyone if you've had a question, just circle out and just watch to see if you'll be able to come back. But enjoy the talk and I just want to turn it over to Sharon. So Sharon, welcome. Thank you, Karen. Um, I appreciate it. The invite. Um, some of you may have heard my intro the other day when I spoke to Karen on about oneness. So this will be very brief. In May of 2009, I woke up in the middle of the night with ET arms holding me. I felt them, I saw them, I screamed. I Two days later, a little tiny little blue ET face looked down at me with the most unconditional love I had ever, 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 ever felt. And I had to explore what was going on. Hello, Maki. And that's pretty much it. I've steep learning curve, love my hybrid kids. I have like a zillion now because according to the ETs, because of my excitement, I just keep jumping timelines and get more and more kids. I'm only in touch with a few of them, but they're very, very strongly pushing now for more and more and more humans to wake up to their reality, to the fact that they're involved in the hybridization program because the main reason for them, in my opinion, is to help us raise our vibration, make the shift, go into the transition, save the earth, love Gaia, all that. Is that enough? <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. We, we talked about it. You, when, we, when we had our discussion, you said at this moment you have somewhere between ooh, 32 and 73 kids. 30, We're not sure. Something, yeah. And, and growing. Right. And growing. And your main connection is with Shar, who is Jay. which is a short name for Shar Rong. She's named after you. It's Shay. She's Shay. Called. Shay. Okay. Yeah. Shay. Yes, and so when when you first discovered, why don't you talk about how when you first discovered that you had these children and what were your next steps? Because you went from real this realization, which a lot of people have had, and and what was interesting is before we started, Wendy was talking about that she recognized as soon as she saw that that she had that you were talking about this, and she saw another woman. She also recognized that for herself. And I had actually made the point on my show on Tuesday that I have never had that inkling. So, and you had said when people see it, they know. Mm. So it, it, that was very interesting because I I had actually not had that feeling. So I'm quite sure. And what you said is when people see it, they know. And and Wendy just confirmed that. So why don't you talk about how? this all began for you as far as moving into working with them, moving into connecting with them. and Because I think people who are just realizing that they have these children would really like to know what's the next step. How do you, how do, you do this and what do you do? Okay. Yeah. Um, I had a real leg up, a, a real gift handed to me because after I saw the little blue ET face, I, I had to talk to Bashar. I had just met him like three days before in, on a CD, not in person at that point. But I just, I, I had to know more. And so I, I booked a private session with Daryl. And I said, you know, you know E.T. arms, um, little blue E.T. face. And he, he just, you know, it was like, he didn't say, are you silly, but <laughs> he said, what do you know about the literature on your planet about the hybrid children? And I literally had never heard the term hybrid children. In fact, two months before that, I'd never heard of the greys. It was all like really a big surprise to me. 
So mm -hmm. I sort of explored, I talked to him again, I kept getting picked in the public sessions for Bashar, just out of the basket, out of the basket, Sharon McCormick, Sharon McCormick, it's like, whoa, something's really going on here. And then I, I heard that he worked with some of the hybrid kids. So I, I, I asked him, I said, do you work directly with mine? And he said, no, but Anima does. Anima is his um, female counterpart, and so I, I knew Daryl had channeled her. And I asked if I could speak to her directly. And so just a few months after the whole opening up for me, I talked to her. She introduced me to five of my children. And that was the beginning. I, I just, it became such my passion that I had to explore and explore and find more people and talk about it and you know start looking for places in the on the planet where the kids can land and you know it just it became my life it was wow. like it was almost like I was a walk-in you know <laughs> it was there was well, such maybe, maybe you were in that moment that part of you awoke and you mm. were you know looking and, and you found your passion really and you found your purpose I can imagine that that's exactly what happened. But so when you, you started to look for other people, did you find them quickly? Did you find no. a lot of other people? No. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly, you know, I would go to Bashar and I, I would, the public events, and I would get chosen again to speak to him. And I would always, you know, people, I would, I, I would go to other events and people would say, "I saw you. You, you know, you're on. You talked to Bashar, didn't you?" you know, so <laughs> that, there was that connection. There were all the CDs and DVDs, and I said, "I recognize your voice, even you know if they'd only heard CDs." So it was like, "Okay," but you know, I always talked about the kids. So people at the breaks or after the public sessions, they would come up to me and start talking. So I did sort of slowly, slowly, slowly build. Um, enough people where I knew this was big. Mm. And then then I met Bridget. I had been looking for three years for someone. I'm a techno idiot, so I wanted to find someone who, with the passion and the technical skill, um, to help me create a website about the kids. And I met Bridget, and she had both. And she just took off with it and created the website in a week, the first website. and. So, you know, she's such a good spokesperson for them. And so, that, you know, that blossomed. And, you know, it just like grew and grew and grew. And probably last summer, the kids themselves just started really, really pushing. So the energy is just like... Pushing, when you say they're... When you say they're pushing, what does that mean exactly? What are they pushing for? What are they, and in what way are they pushing? And are they collectively pushing or are they individually pushing? How is that working? Both collectively and and um, individually. The I for several years I only had contact with my own kids, and just last week I I told you this on the the radio show on Tuesday. Yes. Um, a being named Zitar had come in to me the day before I talked to you on Tuesday, and he had brought a hybrid child named Beta, a girl. And I had a private session, um, healing session, with a woman later in the week. And it turned out that Beta was her child. And uh, that did was she know Beta was her child before she came to you, or were you able to inform her that? But during the healing. Um, mm -hmm. It was very clear, and when I told her that after the healing session, I always talk to people before and after I, you know, go in, and she was like, "Oh yes, I you know." So, and she and had gotten a child during the healing um, herself, and then Beta, you know, anyway, there was that, and it was <clears throat> sorry, it was literally the first time that I, well, the second time, sort of. Um, that I had gotten someone else's child who wasn't anything to do with me. So, you know, that was that was one way. You know, Beta was pushing and then, you know, the whole thing happened a couple of days later and clearly the ETs knew that was gonna happen. So 
Well, they, they I do. will tell you this other, this other one story. Um, there's a woman in Paris who had gotten, we, you know, emailed, you know, messaged back and forth a while, and she wanted a healing. And but when we were talking beforehand, I said, she said, I have. Um, <laughs> I can't remember the child's name now. This is very embarrassing. Um, Amelia. Um, she said, I have a hybrid child named Amelia. And I just, my whole body went like, Poo! because I have a hybrid child named Amelia. Um, and I, it was like, wow, seriously? And then during the healing, wow. I got the message that, um, yes, you're, you're both you know, contributors to Amelia. And one of you is going to meet a man soon who also is um, a contributor. And she messaged me like two months later, and she said, you're not going to believe this. I met this is man. Is it Kirk Nielsen? I'm sorry? No, Is it no. Kirk or not? No, okay, because I know he has some child children too. I was going to say I was small world. Yes, he does. He, he has quite a few. Um, but this, this was in France. This was a woman in France, and she had met a guy in France. Um, who, you know, they were just talking and connecting and all of that. And he was like, yeah, I have a hybrid kid named Amelia. So it's like, whoa. <laughs> that was like, that's the kind of thing they're doing. You know, they're just connecting the humans. They're connecting um, themselves more and more in dream time. <laughs> well, you know, that's a, you bring up an interesting point because a lot of people think about having a hybrid child and they think about, okay, that's my child. But right. truly, if they're hybrid and they're genetically uh, have co contributed DNA, they're, they're composite of DNA, they could have 10 mothers, 20 mothers, yes. or you know, several different people. So that's quite an interesting concept. How does it work actually then with the, um, yeah, with the DNA splicing or whatever is being done, how is that actually how is that actually happening, and and what kind of parents are there? You you explained to me before that you there's some children that are your direct from egg and sperm child, right. and then there's other ones that are your contributory DNA by a percentage too. Right. There um yes. there it's all about percentages. You know, I have one friend who has three kids with 87% of her DNA, which is crazy, you know, and it's crazy high. 17% um, uh, uh, of my kids have at least 57% of my DNA. And it's it sort of, they're all connected. I mean, we're all one. It's about oneness, right? <laughs> but also, um, the kids themselves, no matter where they are, they have a, a real connection with each other. And in a sense, Kirk um, had an experience one night where there were like a whole lot of kids in the room with him. And he knew they were not all his, but they were all his. And that's the kind of thing. I mean, I have a, a sort of human maternal feeling for the kids I consider mine. And we all, you know, all of us who go out on the ships, we mother, we teach, we mentor, we parent, we father. Um, but in a sense, they are all ours. Does that make I sense? I understand that. Yeah, yeah, it makes complete sense. And the more you recognize that connection, then it won't matter if they're 2% yours or 100% yours. Sure. There's a question in the chat that's saying, you know, how do you find out if you have any hybrid children? How does one how does one do that? The first thing is what Karen was talking about. It's the visceral resonance when you hear the term hybrid children or you see a, one of the pieces of artwork and that will tell you there's a 99% chance that you do have a connection to the hybridization program. And uh, after that, there, there are a whole lot of ways. You can choose a symbol, even if you haven't connected directly with one of the children, you can choose a symbol, and when you go to sleep at night, use that. My oldest daughter, Shay, we were talking about, she told me a pink rose, to use a pink rose. That was very early on. 
and it, it was like it took a few days, a few nights of you know visualizing a pink rose and I said, please connect with me. But it worked. There's that. The as we were talking about the other day, Karen, their mantra is play, play, play. <laughs> Play, 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 that's right. Play, play, play. Um, you know, go to the, the park and swing with them. Color with them. Draw with them. Write a story or a dialogue with them. Go for a hike and know that they're walking there with you and you can just have a normal conversation like if you were with one of your human children. And it sometimes takes a while. And, you know, you can talk to people like me or, you know, whoever's out there. And who has, you know, Wendy is on this call. She has very strong connections with her hybrid children, clearly. And, you know, you can talk to any of us. And it's opening up your heart. And knowing what you get is, is real. This, we humans have such a hard time trusting what we can't see, feel, touch, taste, blah. Um, but they are there. Um, they're really, really excited about coming to Earth, the ones who have chosen to do that. And we just need, it's on, our, it's on us now. <laughs> they're there. Um, I, it's, it's an interesting thing about the symbols, because I know as a channel, um, mm -hmm. I have a symbol for the beings I channel, and they've explained to me that's their phone number, basically. Right. Yes, you know that that I focus on that exact same symbol every time, and that just it's a vibrational. Everything's vibration, so that vibration just transports me or opens that gateway to them. And I, and I can imagine that any symbol that you would get would be this, would be that, and, and yes. whatever that is personally to you. Mm. So that so you, you get these symbols through meditation is that how you get them or, is, or through automatic writing or how does that work well Shay the pink rose um, she just gave it to me it just came um, in I wasn't meditating I was just asking and right right Jack is um, a three-year-old he was well he oh. was three then um, when I met him and he was like <laughs> He's so funny. He he did this whole sort of etheric card thing. Pick a card. Pick a card. And I was like, Jack of Diamonds. So that he decided to be called Jack. That was how he got oh, his nice. name. Yeah. So I use a magician's hat. I decided he was uh, you know like a magician with his cards. So I use a magician's hat to, to talk to him. Albion is a musician, so I use um a he has this sort of flute like instrument that's not like any flute we have, but it's close, and so mm -hmm. that's what I use for him. It's that sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. Does anyone have any questions? Uh, Sabrina also asked, she said, is loving all children also a sign that you would have hybrid children? I think it means Actually, you're a kind person. Oh, who is that? Okay, Valerie. Valerie. Okay, Valerie, go ahead and ask your question then. Um, yeah, I just, that's what I was asking. Is is loving all children also a sign of having hybrid children? Because it doesn't matter where I'm at, standing in a line somewhere, whatever. The children just find me, and they absolutely love me. I love them too. I love playing with them, coloring with them, whatever they want to do. I'm up for it. So I just wondered if that is a sign. I I think um, it's a very very good sign, and it's. Um, I, you know, it's not like 100% probably, but the fact that you're on this call is probably the other 1%. <laughs> okay, yeah, thank you. I will tell you there's a, there's a sort of theory or a saying that's in the hybrid children parent community that if, in the fact, that you feel attracted to this information, there's a really high probability that you have a hybrid child. Yes. Um, or else you wouldn't be attracted to it. That's right. So that's... Then that's what I was told, and, and actually I was with Bridget and Kirk out in uh, Sedona at one point, and we were sitting. and Bridget has done a lot of artwork for you know the puzzle pieces. She's big on the puzzle pieces. With yeah. I guess she gets that information to make these for the kids, and and uh, and I said I just don't think I have a child. And she says, Are you attracted to this information? I said, Well, 
No, not so much. <laughs> so, I mean, I find it interesting. Do you know what I mean? But there's yeah. people that are so attracted to it. So I really do know that there's a difference. That's what I'm trying to say. That yeah. If you feel this attraction, if it's something that speaks to you, if you're wondering about it, it's probable because it's not. I, I can just say on the, on the other side of it, you know, I just know that that's not what's happening. But other right. people, if you have any doubt or any question, I would say the answer is yes. Right. Yes, absolutely. And yeah. <laughs> point. I don't know how to make it. <laughs> so the other thing, Valerie, I do want to say, um, I've, the whole thing about the human kids like being attracted to you, I've, I have the same thing. I was at, um, doing my exercises on the beach in Encinitas one day, which is in Southern California, and this little girl who was probably eight um, literally came and stood next to me while I did my exercises, never said a word. When I finished, she just reached up and took my hand. It was so bizarre. And just the other day, I was at a restaurant with a friend, and this three-year-old started like beating on the window next to me. It was like, <laughs> so she came out of nowhere. So yes, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with 100 percent here rather than 99 percent. How's that? Yeah, I, I, really <laughs> I mean, I'm not really so childlike myself, mm. and in fact, I'm trying to get back in touch with my inner child to the right. most most extent. But um, yeah, when children come around, they just bring that out in me. Right. So, yeah. I mean, I absolutely turn into a child myself when they're around. <laughs> Doesn't yeah. matter what we're doing. I mean, I was just working out in my yard the other day, and two little boys came along with their mom, and they're like, "Can we help her?" <laughs> and she's like, "Do you mind?" I'm like, "No, I don't mind. I got a couple little rakes." So I went back to my house and got a couple little rakes, and they're like, "Do you do this clean up the neighborhood thing all the time?" I'm like, "Yeah. <laughs> Can we come back and join you again?" Like, oh, it's okay oh, with your mother. <laughs> how old are they? <laughs> one was like four and the other one maybe um, eight or nine. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. they're, they're the new kids. The new kids with the upped DNA. Okay. <laughs> well, they love me, I can tell you that. <laughs> yeah. They recognize so, the, the vibes. <laughs> what, what, are the, what is the up DNA? What kind of, what is the, how do you recognize maybe a hybrid child then that is incarnating here in our earth as opposed to the ones we're waiting for? They're they're starting to appear, from what I understand. So, what do we? What do you look for, and how do you? How do you? How do you uh, observe one, or or re recognize one? That's a better word. How do you recognize one, and what's the best way to nurture them? Okay, recognize them. Hard question. <laughs> <laughs> they their eyes are often different. They shine brighter. Um, they just have this sort of glow, an aura about them. And they're very interested in helping clean up the neighborhood, for instance. They, I was going to say, you're describing those little boys. Their, their <laughs> eyes really had special um, twinkle in them. Mm. And I've seen that a lot lately in yeah. the younger children. Like mm. I say, I kind of run into them everywhere I go. Right. So, and, and I do give a lot of um, coach you know, to kids with cancer. And okay. they even have it, even if they're suffering with cancer, they have this glow about him and a twinkle in their eye and always a smile on their face no matter what. It's just so inspiring and and wow. <laughs> they are amazing, the new kids. And a lot of them are unfortunately being diagnosed with autism because their frequency is so high they really can't cope here. Um, so it's that's another question, but anyway, um, they they just they love animals. They love being around people. They love sharing. It's just they're different. They're different than you know when I grew up. And you, can I just ask if you have any advice for a parent that may have a child that's been diagnosed with hyperactivity? Uh, you know that kind of thing and I, I don't agree with putting them on on the drugs that they want to put them on right now as far as doctors go but um, do you agree with channeling that energy or you know um, and also maybe watching their diet things like that to try to help them yes to all of the above um, I think the unconditional love and um, acceptance of who they are I have a friend um, who's son is like this and he will you know he's 
he won't make eye contact with many people, that kind of thing. But he also can go on and on and on a monologue about with it, showing you his drawings about this planet and you know, and then I talk to the prime minister of that planet and you know, this is this civilization and ET civilization. He just he literally goes on and on. He's fabulous, um, but he has gotten total unconditional love all his life. He's ten now, and so that, in terms of nurturing the new kids as well as those that um, are being diagnosed, and I don't believe in the medication either. P.S. Um, it's I think that's what it is. It's the acceptance that they're their own people, not trying to you know all that. 3D old-fashioned discipline and you will listen to me and you see that with so many of the parents now, the young parents, and it's so heartening that it's just realizing and recognizing they are different and they've come in with their own vibe, their own agenda, their own soul path and not to try to, you know, make them children, um, I'm protecting them of course and, you know, educating them and all of that, but the the openness that so many of the young parents are showing toward the kids has helped create. I mean, it's that whole evolution, you know, from the, the first wave of vol Starseed volunteers through now, and it, I don't know, does that make sense? Yeah, and who would you, who would you say is um, watching the hybrid children? They some of them are on ships, some of them are on their own planets. Um, Shay is on Ptolemy and she is one of the older um, of the children and there are adults there now. But they, they all look at, after each other um, on the planets. On the ships there are ET, many different civilizations on the ships working with the kids. They, you know, they mentor, they teach, they take care of, they're it, it takes a village and they, they all are a village, unlike us. So it, it's, a, it's a shared effort. They're not, also the humans, one of the real big jobs of the humans in Dreamtime who go out on the ships or to the planets is to nurture the children in a way that some of the ETs can't. That's like a huge part of what we're doing. Tell, tell the thing about the Tola Re, Tola. Ptolemy. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, is the planet that Ptolemy, my yeah. oldest daughter is on, and a bunch of my kids. Not all of them, but some of them. And they every morning there are a million and a half people on this planet. They're all hybrids. And um, the planet is Ptolemy, and the the people are called Ptolemy Raya. So every morning at sunrise, everybody on the planet uh, chants. Tolami Raya, Tolami Raya, and they do it no matter how long it takes, they do it until every person on the planet is connected by their hearts. They're all heart connected. And then it's like, okay, and then they go about their day, whatever they're going to do anyway. But I just I just think that's the best ever. <laughs> I wish the humans could do that. Or even a little group of the humans. A little group of the humans could. You should host that. Uh -huh. You should have a host. You should host it like once a week on on YouTube, and you can do your Ptolemy Raya, and everyone can join you. Why not? Yeah. Except I we need I we need a Gaia thing. Gaia and us. Gaia and us. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right, no problem. We will figure one out. I think it's I think it's beautiful. I like that stayed with me since we had that conversation. I love that. So um, I had a question. Uh, we we're talking about autistic children and ADHD children and things. You know, the only thing that I don't quite get with a hybrid child with a heightened uh, um, vibration is why is that child unable to function? in this society, uh, and not so much to fit into the format, I understand that, but I'm just saying that you, you do see some autistic children, if they are really left to themselves, they can be damaging to themselves, they can you know, have um, really a, just a very rough time n n navigating the world, mm. and it would seem to me 
that that isn't really the most beneficial thing for them because if they're put on this planet it, it's very hard to them to survive even I mean that's a big struggle so what is the point of coming in for in if, if they're coming in as a hybrid which is a higher being why are they suffering that's right. that's my question I I think it's the progression my understanding of the the what Dolores Cannon calls calls the first wave of volunteers that came in after World War II um, a lot of them, according to her regressions, um, were very suicidal um, their their entire lives. It the density, you know, you're out there and you go, oh yeah, those people need help. We'll go in, you know, we'll bring our light, and you get here, and it's just like, dang, this is a lot denser than I ever expected. This is really really hard, and you don't want to be here. I mean, I I actually put myself in this category. Um, and you have no idea how to negotiate Earth. And I think as the vibration of each generation has raised, um, the, 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 the frequency of the kids has gotten higher and higher and higher. And the, the kids that are autistic now and ADHD, it, it's, they're so high frequency that the, they are bombarded with sensory information from all sides all the time because they have they don't have the filters and you know my feeling and I this is only a feeling of mine but it, it's it's this it's the same thing as my generation coming in to the density post-war density and not being able to cope so it's just gotten worse and worse and worse and I mean or better and better you know depending I suffering yes um, but so many of them are unable to communicate in an, in what's considered a normal human way that who knows what's going on inside them. Of course. Well, I, I, I had a discussion with someone yesterday. I was on a radio show, and I, and I made the statement. And you know how you make a statement, and then you realize it's true. So I was giving the information. Right. But I said some people, you know, they come in for the experience of being here and they give themselves impediments so that just creates an experience that you know if it, it, it's like if you come into the world with no arm more than likely you're not going to grow an arm so right. you do go through life with the challenge of no arm right. that is something that doesn't change for you so mm -hmm. that creates a certain certain dynamic of for your experience that only you can have is your individual self but from that perspective. So it may be in fact that thing, but again, I, I find, I find it, it very hard to reconcile, and I'm not saying it's not possible, but in, in my questions I find it hard to reconcile how a hybrid who is supposedly created to propagate the longevity of a race um, say the grays and their their program or whatever um, to propagate the longevity of a race would actually because apparently they can't um, uh, how do you call it they can't reproduce and those things they've lost that ability because of their hybridization programs really gone wrong um, and the things that they you know that they would have done what is the what is the benefit of children coming in that probably won't reproduce because of not being able to function in the world and and also suffering what is that teaching us as humanity that's what I that's the question I have right. I'm not, not saying every child that comes in that's a ADHD or is autistic is automatically a hybrid that may or not may not be true I, I tend to believe a hybrid child would be an elite type of child that would have abilities that would function better that would be able to navigate their world better than say we do right now and I wouldn't only I wouldn't necessarily say every every autistic child or every ADHD child is a hybrid I, I, I find that to be a really big jump that's no, just my opinion no, there absolutely. are savants though I'm not I'm sorry I say there are savants though Yes. that are extremely I, I, talented. I'm not saying that um, every child is, every you know, autistic kid is a hybrid. 
I just um, my feeling about that is everybody has a soul path that they choose before coming in and soul agreements they've made it, it, the grays they have their agenda yes but also I believe that all of us humans involved in the hybridization program also made a soul agreement to take part and um, the kids who come in now at, at whatever level they also have made their soul agreements and they have their soul path and we create the challenges we need for the soul growth and that's my belief on all of that. <laughs> did, did you, when you talked to Bashar, and I've heard Bashar talk about, because people say, how much uh, DNA do I have? They'll ask, what is my DNA? So when are you a hybrid, and when are you just a DNA carrier? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> well, that's a really big question. Well, when people ask him, they'll say, well, you know, what is my background? And he'll say, well, you're, you know, 30% this, 20% that, 15% that, 3% that. Are you not a hybrid then? <laughs> well, according to him and many <laughs> other beings, um, we're all hybrids. You know, we literally, human Earth humanity has, you know, Syrian, Pleiadian, Orion, you know, just this sort of almost endless list of um, DNA that's been fed in over the millennia. Um, he also says, he also will tell people, <laughs> Bashar, um, you're a human. You're on Earth. You chose to come here. You're a human. <laughs> so. mm -hmm. I can't hear you, Karen. You're muted, Karen. You're, thank you. You're human born, but you, you're part Italian, part this, maybe part Palladian as well. <laughs> Karen, the way it was explained to me by and everybody, every ET is going to have their own definition, obviously. But how he explained it to me was if you are born with the ET DNA, then you're considered a hybrid. If it occur after you were born, then they don't consider that a hybrid. But this, you know. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, and he's a hybrid itself, the one that told me this, so... Sharon has no opinion. <laughs> I can just no, I, I, um, I, <laughs> that's really interesting. And, you know, I, I don't really have that much info on the hybrids here. Um, right. I, you know, I know Cynthia Crawford, and she's clearly one. Um, I, Barbara Lamb has a new book out called Meet the Hybrids, which is yeah. interviews with eight um, human hybrids here on Earth. And I did, yeah. Oh no, I was talking. Sorry, I I didn't mean to to, to lead it. I, if this is a hybrid, he's ET hybrid. He doesn't have human DNA. Oh, I see. Okay. Right. Yeah. She um, I I did look up that book. It's called Meet the Hybrids by Barbara Lamb and the, the man in the UK who we just say it's someone in the UK that she read it with. <laughs> But I did, there is a list of the people, and I did go and look uh, up each person, and there were some people that I was surprised that they were hybrids. Did they come forward and identify themselves as hybrids? How was, do you, did you, do you know anything about her? Do you know any of the people in the book that I, were listed? I only know Cynthia Crawford. Um, and Barbara has, for years, the Earth hybrids have been a, a real focus of hers. Mm -hmm. And so she knew a lot of people. And when Miguel got in touch with her, I, I believe the book was his idea, but he knew okay. Barbara. He knew of Barbara. And he got in touch with her, I think, last year and said, Will you do this book with me? And she said, Yeah, because <laughs> it, it's her, one of her real did, uh, expertise moments. Did they come in knowing they were hybrid or did they realize it later? No. Um, I mean, Cynthia. Her father told her when she was, she was, I think she was like in her 30s or something. But then suddenly, you know, it was like me reading Dolores Cannon's Three Waves of Volunteers. My mm -hmm. life suddenly, my entire life suddenly made sense. Okay. I think the same thing happened for her. Um, a couple of the people um, have 
other humans have seen them shape shift, literally shape shift into wow. their ET self. Um, okay. So the, the eight of them, there's a big variation in you know knowledge and DNA and all of that. But it's a very interesting book. Have but they it, been? Uh, okay, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to I'm sorry. I I can't really answer the question because they are kind know. of really. I don't know that much about them. Do we know anything about uh, if there's any, because, you know, the more people that are accepting this and the more people that are working with this, is there any scientists now working with any of these people, testing them DNA-wise, testing anything that would be able to um, quantify what their DNA is and how it would be different and be able to demonstrate that in any kind of scientific way? I don't know much. I, I know I know almost nothing about that, but I do know that Cynthia Crawford, um, mm -hmm. her bone, her bone structure or bone marrow, something about her bones is completely different. And there are a couple of other um, physical things about her, physiological things about her that aren't right in terms of. You know, <laughs> normal human. Well she looks different too. I've seen her, I don't know if anybody knows who she is, but she definitely looks different. Mm. She just has a different look. Yes. That's that's all you can say about it. It's like she almost looks like someone drew her. Do you know uh, what I mean? Yeah, I do. I I met she her looks like you know, I guess probably twenty ten and um, it was at a MUFON conference and I, she okay. was you know, she had a vendor table. And I was just mm -hmm. walking along, and she looked at me. And she said, "You're a star seed," and I had literally never heard the term. It was one of those moments. It's like what? <laughs> so, but I mean, she's very, very tuned in. Yeah, interesting, interesting. Mm. Oh, sorry. Um, someone asked me to type her name. It's Cynthia oh. with a Cynthia Crawford. Yes. It's like Cindy Crawford, but Cynthia but Crawford. C Y N T H I A yeah. Crawford. Right, exactly. So, does anyone else have any questions for, for Sharon? Wendy, where are you? Quiet woman. Oh, I'm just absorbing all of this. I'm just absolutely fascinated and resonating with everything everyone has said here, and it's very exciting for me. And just the idea of all this being out there and, and thanking you, Sharon, for just bringing this out there because, like you said, when you very first started, there was nobody out there to talk to and to share this information with. So just bringing this out in the open. And I was wondering for myself, I've been one who it's been my highest joy ever since myself discovering the knowing. And everything that we've learned since through Human Colony and Jim Charles Channeling, um, that they communicate, the hybrid children communicate with us in a variety of ways. And I happen to be one who, um, my highest joy is galactic light languages. And I also have learned through his channeling that they also communicate with each other as well as um, through hand sign language, which is something I've also just automatically somehow just activated and know that I didn't even know I knew, but I know it. So, right. and that, and then as well as telepath telepathic, we know that they are te they are telepathic beings. I'm sorry, did someone say something? I'm sorry. I, it's Sharon. I just said that's fantastic. And thank you. So, I, I guess my my question is. Have you encountered any others, or have you yourself encountered other modes of communication with them, as well as the hybrid parents? Oh, and I did want to add also the galactic drawings. Now, it's interesting because just now sitting here talking with all of you and, and talking with you, I'm, I just have a sketch pad in my hand, and I also happen to write galactic light languages. And it's as if Hold they're it speak it's like they're speaking to me right now and I'm writing while I'm while we're talking. So I'm Can just we see wondering it? Oh, no. oh sure, sure. Um, I'm just wondering, have you had any other additional experiences yourself or have you encountered others who've had these other types of communication types of experiences with them? 
Um, and here, I'll, I'll just hold it up briefly. Um, let's see if I can see myself here. I'm on my mobile, so bear with ah. me, please. Okay, here I am. Okay. Fantastic. Brilliant. Yeah. Ah, yes. Beautiful. So, and, and I mean, I just, I have pages and pages and pages of these, but the point is, I'm mean, just, uh, that was my question. <laughs> has anybody else had, or do you know, has had this experience? Um, there are uh, quite a few people I, I know, either know or know about who do the same light language writing um, and light language um, communication, but communication verbal. Speaking. Yeah, okay, and um, verbal is, okay. And, and then the sign language, I was, I was, we learned for Jim that, that it's one of the ways that they communicate with one another in school and so forth. I, I also happen to be fortunate to be one of their teachers as well and guides and that that's one of the reasons they can how they communicate because they're telepathic and also they communicate with the hand sign language and they he joked about it he said so they don't so they don't like get in trouble for talking out of turn or out of or something like that kind of like um, passing notes in class <laughs> 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 so they sign language each other so I thought that was kind of cute <laughs> that's very good and, uh, and songs and songs uh, was the other question. Songs. Um, I a lot of us I've discovered seem to know the same songs, and we've come to learn that many of those songs are being like sent to us, or we're remembering them because we sing them with the hybrid children. Okay, that's cool. Do you are you Mary? I'm uh, sorry, Sharon. Are you familiar with? Uh, Mary Rodwell from Australia. Yes. Yes, have you have you actually chatted with her or have you no. worked with her at all? No, I just I've seen some of her her videos. Yeah. Okay. I, I I was in touch with her several years ago because I didn't before I came to Human Colony. I've been speaking a language since I was like 16 years old. Oh. Um, and so I was trying to figure out what it was and, and, and stuff like that. But she's worked with a lot of people that do the languages and also like Wendy does do the writings and, right. and stuff like that, the different stuff. Do you do any kind of writing? Do you channel any writing or artwork? I, I know you, I've seen you holding a picture that you made, but is, are you channeling your children's artwork? or? I, I have a, I've done a few. My son Albion, the musician, um, came through Daryl a few years ago and absolutely... <laughs> insisted I do artwork of them. I mean, he was like, you will do it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm scared, I don't do that. Um, but I did, and it, I, I discovered that doing artwork and any, create, any creative activity, but especially for me and a lot of other people, doing actual artwork opens you up so totally to the kids sending messages. Hmm. What they look like, what they like to do. I mean, it, it, Jack, the the card shark, <laughs> the magician. Um, he said that when his group, when they do birthdays, they you know they don't really celebrate the same way we do. But he said they don't give gifts. That they the person giving the the gift will touch forests with him and transmit information. So that's the gift, the birthday present. I just think that's cool. It, <laughs> and that, uh, you know, it's that sort of thing. Um, Wendy, the, the whole thing about um, light language, I do know a lot of people. Um, there's a guy in, in Sedona. He, went, he just went one, one night, and it was just like, I never saw anybody write so fast in my life. <laughs> And it was all light language. <laughs> wow. It was really cool. I mean, it was like his hand was a blur. Um, there, I know um, a couple of people. I was, I was in Holland, in the Netherlands, a couple of years ago, um, working with a group called Star Global Family. They'd invited me to come over. And I, we were in a, probably 20 people, and two of them do light language. And they had an entire light language conversation. It was so cool. <laughs> So oh, I, love like that. <laughs> I, I, I know that group because that's here in Holland where I am. Yeah, that's a very active group. 
Yes. It's a very active group, yeah. They, they just bought, um, last year I believe, they bought property in Shasta. So they're there too. So they're, they're spreading out. They had looked in um, Portugal also. They, they have big contact with the hybrid kids. That the hybrid kids are one of their main focuses. Okay. Yeah, they do. They do a lot of programs in the Netherlands for children, helping them to, you know, open up and well, you know, they do a lot of really nice things. But they're they're international now. Portugal, we were told, is that we were told that uh, in one of the channelings that the spiritual center of the world is shifting more now to South America than than had, where it had been before, and that that's really going to become the epicenter of the spiritual energy because yeah. of its openness and things like that. So yeah. I can imagine why they would be looking in Portugal. Um, there is <laughs> there is a question from Krelak. Uh, He's in our chat now. He just came in. He said he wants to know, do the children have a daycare system? I know you uh, had answered this, but he's he's moved to the room, so if you could maybe answer that. And if people can make room for other people, if you've been sitting here a while, um, it would be